All right, we've begun recording. So just a brief intro. So I'm Mark Hatcher. I'm a lecturer at Health University Psychology Department. I'm also the director of the Center for Mental Health and Wellbeing that's organizing this festival. So today we're really glad that you're taking the time and you're interested to come along and learn about the festival and also to take part in this Q&A. So the idea is that we can get your ideas. And even though we launch in just a few days, there's still time for us to craft and shape it according to sort of the input and the ideas coming from those who might want to participate or support submit films or whatever. So I'm going to briefly introduce. Um, so just Yvonne, you want to say hello? So Yvonne's one of our coordinators, our undergraduate coordinators on the hello. festival. Amanda is a school counselor and she's going to speak to us a little bit about high school and mental health later on. Tamar is a clinical psychologist at Malaysian Mental Health Association. And Tamar's, sorry, Tamar, for just uh, ambushing you there. But yeah, Tamar's going to speak a little bit um, about this scene mental health and access to mental health services, particularly among young people from a clinical psychologist perspective. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, mental health and then we're going to get into film. Uh, let's, uh, let me share my screen. So this is session two. If you miss session one, don't worry. Session one was on Thursday. This is more or less a duplication for those that don't have time on, on a weekday night, but we'll try and vary it a little bit. And of course your input will be different. Uh, let's kick off with a pop quiz since we're an academic institution partially. So just to get a sense of who you are, and what you know, what you don't know, how you think. So the first question is who said this? In a sense, all film is entering into someone else's dreams. Maybe we can even share the same dreams, exchange the same experiences. Anybody know who said that? Go on. Anybody, any film buffs out there? Okay, it's David Lynch. <laughs> all right, the director, David Lynch. So I, I chose this from David Lynch because one, he's, um, he's fascinated by the mind. And he's a great filmmaker, so he brings together both elements that we're, we're really trying to merge the magic of in this festival, which is our love for cinema and the way it can transform our lives and transform the way we think and how we feel and have an impact on our well-being and mental health. And too, because David Lynch is, is a real advocate of, of mental health and well-being, particularly from a meditation practice point of view. The next one, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times, if only one remembers to turn on the light. Okay, anybody know who said this? I, if anyone's putting this in the chat, let me know. All right, I'll, I'll turn on the light. That was Professor Albus Dumbledore. So maybe we've got a spectrum of interests across cinema here. Um, I've not seen the film in which Albus Dumbledore said this. So I've maybe only said it in the book. Anyway, let's, let's move on to what we're going to get to today. So just giving you a welcome. Um, we're going to just say what is the My Mind on Film Festival and why we're doing it. And then we're going to have a little session where the people I just introduced you to are going to talk about young people and mental health a bit. And then we're going to give you some tips on how to make a film from uh, Edward Lim, who's a film producer. And then we're going to let you know how you can get involved, what you can do to support the festival or submit a film. And then we're going to move into the question and answer, which is the most important session where we get your input. And then finally, we'll give you some key dates and points to keep in the diaries. A bit of housekeeping. So I said we'd be finished by 11.15, that's probably a bit ambitious. We'll be aiming for probably 11.30. Um, if you could save your questions till the second half while we do the Q&A, that'd be great, just so we can kind of get through the information we're gonna deliver first quite smoothly. But do put questions in the chat box if you want to, and keep your, mute, your mics muted uh, unless you're speaking, just so people can concentrate and we can um, focus a little bit. So what is the Malaysian, uh, what is the My Mind on Film Festival and why are we doing it? So our objectives really are to engage with young people and give them a platform upon which they can express themselves. Uh, what we don't want to do um, is tell young people entirely what they ought to be doing and thinking around their mental health, because we don't really get it a lot of the time, um, because generationally things are changing really quickly. So we really sincerely want to provide a way to open communication and, and allow people to express themselves. So we want people to be inspired to share their perspectives and share their ideas very openly. Um, as in no constraints on how they do that. We want to recognize that mental health is universal. So this is one of the sort of themes within the, the festival. Mental health is 
peculiarly almost universally associated with mental ill health. Um, and part of the reason why we have a trouble around the language is because of that. Um, but mental health is something that we all have, of course, the same we have physical health, and it's something that changes over time. It can be good, it can be bad, um, we can work on it, and it's, it has this positive spectrum. So we go through stages where we're really positively mentally healthy, and that's included in this festival, yeah? So it's full spectrum mental health that we're looking at, and we want to break down the stigma. We recognize that mental health is complex, as we just said. We recognize that if you're experiencing mental health challenges, that can be uh, terrifying and debilitating. Um, understandably, then the stigma around it, but we want to try and at least look at that stigma and find different ways to access and talk about it. So we're inviting submissions from young people, two categories, high schoolers age 16 uh, and above, and young adults who are basically those who are out of school aged 18 to 25. The prizes that people are quite interested in, um, we have a, a competition within the festival. So the festival will be for all submissions that meet the criteria for the festival. But the competition will have several stages and finally we'll have six finalists and from those we'll choose two winners, one for each of the age categories, and they will uh, win magnificent prizes including cold hard cash, the opportunity to choose bursaries or scholarships to our university, film industry placements, um, counselling and therapy sessions, packages that we're really excited by offering this because it's a little bit um, unconventional. But because we, we realize, and lots of us realize that therapy and counseling and this kind of support is good for all of us, uh, we, we, we think it's something that's nice to provide someone that you care about. And if maybe you never thought about it, or maybe you think it's something that you might want to try, well, then maybe it's an opportunity. So we're, we're trying to uh, try this trend of, of giving this as a, as a gift um, or as a prize here. We're also looking at some more tangible items, some filmmaking kit, and we should have confirmation for that stuff very soon. Our jury for the competition, uh, includes some illustrious figures in mental health and also in filmmaking. So we're very honored to have the Tonku Kateri as one of our uh, jurors. And she also happens to be the international patron of World Mental Health Day this year. So not only is she an advocate that stands on the, the national stage, but also globally this year, she's representing um, this, this drive and this cause for mental health. Uh, Dato Dr. Andrew Wahanraj, I'm not sure if he's here today. Um, he's the president of MHA and also a board member of the World Federation for Mental Health, and he's gonna be one of our, our jurors, along with Edward Lin, a film producer at Grim Film, who's gonna to speak to us in a little bit, and Ming Han, AKA The Ming Thing, who is a, um, a very well-established and well-known uh, YouTuber and filmmaker. We'll also include a, a panel of peer jurors, um, those who are of the same age as the filmmakers, who can also give their input in deciding which is the best film. All right, so, I'd now like to hand over to Yvonne, if that's all right. And Yvonne, could you just um, moderate across our three speakers and introduce our speakers? All right, okay. Um, yeah, so now we have, uh, first of all, thanks Dr. Mark. Yeah, that was a very good like introduction. Okay, so we have Amanda now, who's a school counselor. And like, I'll just pass it over to you. Do you wanna add in anything? <laughs> Hi, yeah. good morning, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Yvonne. Thanks, Mark. All right. Um, so I'll just speak from a school counselor's um, perspective. Uh, I'm currently a school counselor at uh, Stella Marie's International School. Um, so the first I thought um, I touch on the factors that I feel leads to um, deteriorating mental health in high schoolers. Um, the first most um, common factor, I think, will be due to their peers, relationships, friendships, um, classmates. So teenagers, um, especially high schoolers are at their age where um, the priority is being placed more on their friends compared to their family. Um, they're at the age where they feel um, it's important to have a sense of belonging um, and fitting in with their peers. So whenever that doesn't happen, whenever they feel left out, or even worse, if they're victims of bullying and if they're outcasted, um, that tends to have a very big negative impact on their mental health. And the second factor, um, I think, is parents, family. So I think these days, um, it's becoming increasingly common that a lot of the students come from either broken families or families that don't have a um, very good relationship. They don't really communicate much or talk much. And that also has an impact on um, the student's mental health. Um, they live in a home where it might not be so peaceful. 
And often um, they feel that it might be their fault and they also feel helpless that they can't do anything um, to help their parents or to help out in the family. And another thing that um, family and parents also adds on is the expectation. Um, I think especially in our culture, there's a great importance placed on academic achievements. And that creates a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety for the young um, children, for the students. They feel that they need to meet this expectation that their parents have. Um, and when they're unable to do so, they become really stressed and really anxious and that takes um, a toll on their mental health. So what prevents them from um, reaching out for help? I think the very first um, reason, which applies not only to high schoolers, but in general to everyone, is that stigma of um, reaching out, uh, going for counselling. So they feel that if they go for counselling, that means that something is wrong with them. Uh, so the students don't want to be seen with me. They don't like to be seen walking to my office. They try to make it really discreet even if they come for counselling. Um, and a lot of them don't want to because they're worried that their friends will know something is up and that everyone will think they're weird. So I think that's the biggest reason why they don't reach out for help. And another thing is also um, not wanting to worry their parents uh, because you know, if they tell their parents that they're going for counselling and they have to um, uh, kind of see the counsellor, they're worried that their parents will um, know that something's up and that, you know, their parents will have an added worry to think about on top of um, whatever family things that is going on at home as well. And another thing that I wanted to touch on is also the impact of the current um, COVID-19 pandemic as well as the lockdown um, and the impact that has on the high schoolers, um, the students. So with um, a, a big part of this year for the students uh, have been focused on online learning and not so much of being in school anymore because of the lockdown. And I think online learning has a big impact on um, their learning because with online learning, there's a lot of disruptions. There's a lot of distractions. It's a lot harder to follow um, their lessons online. And when they are trying to follow but are unable to, the students then get... Um, stressed and worked up again because even though the mode of teaching is different and times are different, things are different this year, the expectation is still there. Their parents, um, their teachers, people around them still expect them to perform that they, the way that they were expect, expected to perform uh, even before this, even though now they're doing online learning. Um, and also if online learning comes, um, this added increase of cyberbullying, in my opinion, um, it's a lot easier to just now that even when the teacher is teaching through online learning, it's a lot easier to just have a separate chat box pop up and a lot of comments are being exchanged and cyberbullying becomes really easy um, for, for students. And that also has a big impact um, on their mental health because they now have another thing to worry about as well. And with the lockdown, staying at home 24-7, um, it's also not easy, especially for those, like I mentioned earlier, who come from uh, broken families or families that might not be um, so peaceful and calm. It's difficult because they no longer have like an escape route. Um, before this, they might have school, their friends might be like their support system. They might be able to interact with people in school, their teachers, their friends. But now when they're stuck at home, they're really just stuck with their families. And oftentimes... Um, with the pandemic now, um, a lot of parents are worried about uh, losing their jobs, um, being uh, having financial constraints. And the, the students, the children pick up on all this. They're old enough that they understand all these kind of things now. And that also worries them. And I don't think parents realize that, but uh, the high schoolers also absorb a lot of these things. And this adds as an extra stress, um, another added factor for them um, to worry about. And so... Yeah, I think those are the three points that I wanted to, to highlight and that it's harder this year. It's a lot harder. As it is, it's not easy for the students, but this um, pandemic and this year has been a lot harder on them and there's a lot more things affecting them this year compared to the, the usual um, years. So yeah, uh, I think that's all from me. Thank you. Yeah, just wanted to bring back, like just to re-emphasize one point. I think you mentioned about like stigma being like something that like, just throughout all populations, we kind of like face. And yeah. I think that's the reason why we also want to do this to like make sure that, you know, in some way we can build a platform that can, you know, uh, get rid of that stigma or at least try to 
reduce it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But thank you so much for sharing. So no next problem. up we actually have Nani who will be sharing her her perspective from a university student, which is quite similar as well. But yeah, I'll hand it over to you. Nani? Hi everyone, good morning. Hope you're all doing okay. Um, all right, so today I'll be talking a little bit about the university student perspective. So I'm not sure how many of you, you know, are students here. Maybe you can relate to some of these things. Um, so the first thing is that, you know, some of us have never been away from home. So maybe some of us are traveling from um, abroad, you know, we're studying in a university in a different place. Or, you know, maybe we're just, you know, living, not living at home, living on campus, that sort of thing. And, you know, that itself is already a struggle on its own. Maybe it's your first time being away from home and um, learning to adapt to everything, you know, coming out of your comfort zone. Um, that, that is a struggle itself. And um, with the pandemic, to add on to it, not being able to go back, if you didn't go back, you know, before the lockdown happened and things like that, now you're kind of, you know, um, stuck in a pickle in a way. Um, and a lot of my friends, those that, you know, haven't been able to go back, they're missing home. And um, you, you, know, you do know that, you know, uh, when your friends, you know, you, you do realize that, okay, you know, they're not doing okay. And it's so important to check in on them and make sure, you know, they're doing all right and things like that because it does have an effect on their mental health. Um, second thing, um, it's a struggle to balance having an education, a social life, finances, overall well-being. Um, as a student, there's so much to take on. We've got our assignments and then we've got um, having um, a social life as well. And uh, I just wanted to touch a little bit on the point Amanda made about, you know, um, cyberbullying, you know, happening in schools and stuff. You know, a lot of our life is on social media and uh I, I am running a campaign for cyberbullying myself and I do know that Malaysia is actually in the top 10 countries globally for cyberbullying cases. Um, so that is a struggle as well. And um, it doesn't end there. Um, the employment rates are decreasing and the retrenchment rates are increasing. So we are really struggling, you know, in uni. Oh, I've got to do well for this and that. Um, you know, for exams and stuff. And then you have this additional worry, okay, uh, am I going to get a job after I graduate? Because, um, you know, it's already very hard uh, in, in certain ways for a fresh grad to get a job. And um, to add on to that, the pandemic is here, which has kind of been accept, uh, affecting the job market as well. So um, there's a lot of things that a student has to struggle with and um, it, it's very, how to say, it has detrimental effects on our mental health. Yeah. So that's, that's for me. Thank you, Nani. But yeah, I do agree. Like, because I think with university students are kind of like in between transitioning from like studying fully academics to like really a working life and like I think that also adds on like a lot of stress and like just knowing how to navigate around that is a little bit difficult so but thank you for sharing okay thank you so next up we have Tamar uh, she'll be discussing about uh, a clinical psychologist perspective on like mental health among young users <laughs> okay thanks Yvonne thanks Dr. Mark for this opportunity um, hi everyone welcome to, to today. So um, I just want to share a bit about a clinical psychologist perspective. So in the recent years, we definitely have seen an increase in awareness about mental health and that more and more young people, they come and they do seek out therapy. So definitely like what both the previous speakers have said, um, being a young person is definitely a challenging period in a person's life because of all the transitions. Um, as they move from childhood to become an adult. So different periods of life, they have different challenges. So here we are covering two different categories. The first one is the late teens, which is very well covered by Amanda. And the second one is the young adults, which perhaps um, university students or the young working adults can more relate to. So besides what Amanda shared, um, I want to add on that perhaps late teens, they're also struggling between balancing 
um, how to be like a good family member and how to individuate a psychology term to, to grow out from the family as they become an adult. So that's definitely not an easy perspective. Um, and also for the young adults, it's, it's a time where they start to find their footing into this world. They are started to learn how to establish their own identity. Uh, for example, who they are, what they want um, and what they look for in the future. So, and in terms of getting this new employment, new job and you know, relating with their colleagues and boss, these are all quite challenging situations where they are expected to just adapt. So recently with the, um, the COVID-19, um, we can see this increase in a rise of online therapy or telehealth, which is basically delivering health services through um, technology and telecommunications. Um, in fact, in Malaysia itself, this has exacerbated many anxiety and depression and many mental health issues. So for example, domestic abuse in Malaysia has tripled in numbers. And also that um, you know, crisis lines, support lines are getting more and more calls from the people. So I believe that this, this project has definitely come at a really good time where mental health is on the rise and awareness is definitely needed. Um, so the pros of telehealth or online therapy is making the awareness of mental health and mental health services more accessible to people. So I have clients from all over Malaysia and it's more affordable because um, NGOs and different different service centers have started to provide subsidies and even provide free support for the people and the public. And it's really convenient. So imagine you just, um, you can just see a therapist from your home and not even have to drive. So this is, a, this is the pros of, you know, telehealth. And, but at the same time, there are cons as well. So for example, the internet um, and stable internet, um, there might be issues with privacy. So for example, what you struggle is with your family, but you are within the family at home itself. And there are restrictions. For example, we're always concerned about the safety of clients during, during these times. So to wrap up, I think that this project is amazing because it helps to destigmatize the issue of help seeking. So traditionally, seeking help has always been seen as a sign of weakness. Um, but actually, if you look at it from a different perspective, it is essentially problem solving. And essentially a strength. So sometimes, you know, as humans, we do get um, affected by what's happening around us. And sometimes all we need is a person to walk beside us, to journey beside us for a little while until we're able to take it up again and move on in life. So thank you for this opportunity. Um, I hope that this short sharing have given you a glimpse into, you know, what's happening in terms of um, the clinical perspective. Thank you, Ron. Back to you. Thanks for sharing. That was really great. But now we're gonna move on to less mental health related and more about the film side of things. So Edward, if you're ready, you can take it away. I just want to check if we have continuity. I, I'm not sure if Edward's actually here. Um, I've not heard from him, but I, I don't see okay. him here. <laughs> All right. So what we'll do is, um, thanks Yvonne. Oh wait there, is this Edward popping in? Uh, no, I didn't like get it. Okay, everyone. So yeah, sorry, we have to wait a little bit. He's, I think he might be working this morning. Um, if you've not seen it, if we don't get to it, we'll post the recording of the last session where Edward does talk and he gives lots of input on the film. Um, and we'll try and reiterate, reiterate what he said during any Q&A. Um, but let's move on then to the next section, which is how do you get involved? Um, so Essentially, you can do quite a few things, but making a film is what we'd really like you to do if you're a young person. Um, and you can make that film as an individual or in a team, it's up to you. Uh, you can tell your friends, your families, and your students, and your teachers, and anybody basically, the more you spread the word about this, the more likely it's gonna land in the ears of somebody that's interested in making a film. And, and then that will spread. So you can also follow and share and like on social media. So you can similarly get the word out um, and contact us directly with any ideas you've had. Already after the first session, I had emails, and questions and it really helps us to get a good sense of what's going on so um yeah please keep doing that and we want this to be as participatory as possible and we want to sort of build a community where we're doing it based on all the input that we have collectively 
the criteria for the film submissions, that's to be discussed still and be finalized by our launch. Um, but essentially we have, we have you know, a fair few things already more or less in place. So first of all, it has to be made in Malaysia or by Malaysians. Given the COVID-19 situation, if you're Malaysian and you're stuck overseas, you still qualify. Um, if you're in Malaysia and you're not Malaysian, you still qualify. But those are the criteria. Um, all contributors have to be within the specified age categories. Now, we can't police that too closely, but if your father happens to be a cinema photographer, we'd prefer that you don't then you know, bring him in to do your filming. So hopefully it's all done and we'll have an honor system where you, you basically you know, you say that you've done it. Um, the contents are dear to a PG-13 rating. So you can see the criteria, we'll post those for you in terms of what's allowed and what we'd rather you don't put in. The duration, two to eight minutes, again, um, there's some scope for finalizing that. English language or with English language subtitles made during the last couple of years. So if you've got a film that fits the criteria otherwise and you've already made it, you can submit it. And the full guidelines will be available upon launch, including criteria for our jurors, so you know what they're going to be looking for to give you some tips. Uh, and once your film's ready, you can submit it between October 20th and, and December 20th to this website, filmfreeway.com forward slash my mind on film. That's not open yet. If you go there now, you'll be told that the festival's not active, but it will be open from the 20th. Okay, now we hand over to the more interesting bit. So we'll start with the, the Q and A. Um, let me see, I, I, before we're doing that, while you're thinking of your questions, you can put your questions in, um, into the chat as well, or you can raise your hands or you can just jump in. I just want to um, see if Anthony's there. Anthony Pinto, are you, are you still here? Hi, Mark. Hey, Anthony, how are you doing? I just want to take the chance to say hello. I thought I saw you there. Hi. <laughs> so just introduce everybody to Anthony. Anthony is with the Rotary Club of uh, Bukit Kara Sunrise, and he's been incredibly supportive of our festival and hooked us up with the Rotary Actors as well. And I'm not sure if, is, is Grace here? Grace, I didn't see her in the room. Uh, my youth service chair, Ile, is in the room. Okay, brilliant. Do you, Ile, are you there, Ile? Yes, hi, I'm here. Hey, Ile. I wonder, hi. do either of you guys have any questions to kick us off? No, I think just, uh, you know, I just popped in from the other meeting. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and when you already started, I realized, hey, wait a minute, I got to go to this one. Yeah, the, the last slide was useful. Uh, I'm meeting up with the interactors uh, next week Brilliant. and will share any material that I can get from here so that they can, you know, uh, I, I didn't notice that any one of them is in the room today. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've had contact with some interactors, so we've yeah. already established contact. So we're hoping you can spread any networks we have. It really, it really makes a difference. So thanks so much for doing yeah. that. All right, I think yeah. we've got we've got a hand up. Is that Karen? You have a question. Oh, is Karen just as Karen just drawn on the on the <laughs> on the slide? <laughs> wow, that's brilliant, Karen. That's creative. I didn't know you could do that. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So let me just open it up. Do we have any questions first of all to any of our speakers or about the festival criteria? Hi, Mark. You said the criteria for film submissions is to be discussed and finalised. So when will it be finalised? It'll be absolutely concrete by launch on the 20th. So, okay. I mean, probably a little bit before then, but we want to give people time who participated today to give their suggestions and to endorse more or less. So there are a few things like how many people should be allowed in a group. And we had a discussion about that on Thursday. So if you want to hear that deliberation, you can go to, you can see the other video. Um, and we, you know, we've decided to leave it, to leave it open because essentially, you know, there are arguments either way, but an individual can make an astonishingly good film. And, you know, likewise, a huge number of people can make a, you know, a not so great film. So we feel that that shouldn't be the criteria. We just let people submit however they want to. When it comes to prizes, obviously it's then up to a group to decide how they divide money or how they break up camera equipment. But that's, yeah, that's out of our hands. Or a scholarship. <laughs> or scholarships too, exactly. So I think there's going to be, yeah, there's, there's going to be a degree of working out. But I think when we talked to Edward, he said that that's what young filmmakers usually do. They decide in advance how, before they submit, what they're going to do or anything that they might win. Um, and, you know, that's normally a sort of fringe motivation anyway. Um, oh, I didn't say, so the films will be shown in MBO Cinema, the, the finalists. Um, if the conditions permit, at the moment, obviously, the restrictions are physical distancing and uh, CMCO, but later on, once things clear up, we will have a screening. 
otherwise it will be virtual. Okay, the lower you. lower age limit is 16, not lower than that, huh? Not lower than 16, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because that's the question I had from the interactors. Yeah, were they wanting it to be lower? 15, yeah. 15, 15. is actually in form three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had two questions. One is what's the lower age limit? Because there are 50 people in 15 that are interested. And then also with the, you know, can they submit it as a team? So I see that that's already open now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we what so in Malaysia, is 15 seen as sort of a, a watershed age? Is it a, an age of, of transitioning into a different stage in terms of uh, legally and uh, that really, I think uh, 15 is when they finish the lower secondary and from 4 at 16, they start the up higher secondary, upper secondary. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, you know, no issues with the whatever cutoff you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thank to me, it looks, it's fine. 16 looks fine. But, you know, if you feel that you want to bring in the form 4, because, yeah. uh, sorry, the form 3, but the form 3 actually... Uh, they are in a heel in a, a key exam year also. So I think from four sixteen is really good time to start because you know they have a bit more free time. Okay. They don't have the pressure of exams and all of that. Right. Okay. But now, okay. of course, during this period is is end of the year, so the, everybody is free anyway. Right. Right. Okay. Well, that's yeah. good. Hopefully, we've, yeah. we've hit the right timing. Yeah. All right. Cheers, Anthony. Yeah. Do we have any other any other questions or suggestions? Kenneth Tan from Sabah, Kota Kinabalu. Welcome to the room. <laughs> hey, Kenneth. Kenneth, you're mute, Kenneth. Yes. Hey, hello. Yes, Pipi Anthony, how are you? <laughs> good, good. Dr. Mark Archer here from Health University is the lead on this, uh, my, my, my mind on firm competition. If you have any questions, you can post to him and the group here. Mm, okay. Nice to meet you, Kenneth. Yeah, any questions you've got, just let us know. Ah, okay. I, I just, uh, yeah, I just heard from Edward. He's, I must have given him the wrong timing. So hopefully he might jump in, he might jump in pretty soon. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I wonder if um, any of our, any of the students, how do we have any high school students here or any um, students who are interested in making a film? There's a couple of questions in the chat group, chat group. Ah, yeah, the chat. yeah. All right, so we've got a question here. Does the film have to be youth focused? Um, it, it doesn't. Um, it has to be made by people in that age category, but it's entirely up to them how they want to, um, to document or to film their perspective on mental health. So, Shu Kui Fang, do you have something in mind? Is Chu Kui Fang in the room? <laughs> Maybe Chu Kui Fang's gone. Yeah. There's another question in there. Will there be specific requirements for the video format, resolution, and size? Hmm. Uh, as, as yet, no. Um, we haven't quite finalized the, the uploading uh, materials, but um, it's something we'll, we'll have to take advice on. Do you have suggestions, Jay Ren? <laughs> Yvonne, could you, Yvonne, would you mind just taking over for a second so I can contact Edward and see if I can get him to come in? Sure, sure. All right. Cheers, Yvonne. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think because we're still like finalizing things. And also, I think one thing is that like this is our first time doing this, so we're not so like mm. sure on quite a few things. So it, it's like really great if you guys could just like add in any input. Lah. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be, it would be great if, you know, as, as these two sessions that you've had for Q&A, right, that ultimately when you launch, you also have a full FAQ, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're hoping to like, because we've recorded both, right, that we're hoping mm. to kind of um, make posts of like very, I guess, like frequently asked questions and then like yeah. post it up on like our social media so you guys can like, you know, check that out. <laughs> yeah, we have it yeah. on Instagram and Facebook. So you you can find us at my mind on film dot my yeah. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's one more question. Do all the cast crew members have to be within the age range? Oh, um, no, that's actually up to you guys. So like we're trying not to cap 
how many members and also the age range as well. As long as it's youth, la, like within the age range of like eight, uh, 16 to 25, that would be fine. Yeah. But it doesn't mean like you guys are uh, restricted down to if you're high schoolers, then you you just have to stick to like high school age range, if that makes sense. Yeah. I hope that answered your question. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that I mean, just to clarify that a bit, so it, it's a good question. Because of the categories, because we're going to be awarding prizes in two different categories, and it is a bit tough, I think, if you've... So first of all, yeah, you've got all of the people that are involved in the filmmaking have to be within 16 to 25. So if you're 26, then unfortunately you couldn't, but that's a bit constrained. And also the categories, if you're in the high school category, then all of your team has to be in the high school category. So that, that can be a bit of a challenge, but just for fairness, we want to separate it like that. I think from the other perspective, I guess the contestants or the people submitting into the competition will have to fall into the age category. And the other question is the content of the video itself, the actors in the video or the, you know, are, do they have to be in the age category also? Yeah, so the, the actors, anybody that's contributing to the, to the film has to be in the age range. So like, so Farin, he says, you know, cast, crew, anybody editing, anybody doing anything um, has to be in the age range. But, um, you know, they can depict a different age, an age group. So that other question about does it have to be youth focused? It could be about, you know, you know, someone asked a question about focusing on dementia or you yeah, know, old age dementia. Yeah. So it could be about that. Um, if that's their experience and that's what they want to, if that's what, you know, mental health means to them and if that's how they want to express their yeah. mind. So just in terms of contributions have to be. Right. That age. Not to say that, you know, you, it's not to say that with age comes greater capability, <laughs> but um, again, just for, just for fairness. Yeah. Yeah. I see that Edward's here. Edward, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And sorry for oh. not clarifying that we were on a morning session. I know we switched over to a I morning it, session. I thought it was the evening, like, like, like the last time. Like Thursday, we were trying to hedge across people's <laughs> lifestyles. I got that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for jumping in, man. So let's, um, if you don't mind, we'll just go to Edward's brief presentation and the few points he's going to give us about tips on making a film. So yes. I'm going to go sorry. back up. Okay, just now uh, regarding the cast, huh? age mm -hmm. of the cast. Um, the cast, uh, is there an age limit? For example, um, like if, we, if our student or our youth want to do a video on aged care patient, right? So they shouldn't have <laughs> limit, right? So That's as long good. as, as so, so this may... Uh, that's tricky. You're right, Kenneth. No, you're right. You're, you're, yeah. Thanks for highlighting that. No, it's a very good point. Okay, we'll have to go and give this some serious consideration. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to come up with sort of clearer guidelines on what type of involvement from other people. Yes. Be. Okay. Okay, that's a very good point. And yeah. Thanks for hiring for for raising that. Okay, course, that's a good point. Yeah. Of course, we also don't want uh, like uh, a parents or a guardian who, who who be the main cast throughout the whole video. <laughs> then it will be defeat the purpose. But let's yeah. say if we take, take the, uh, the storyline that um, we interview some um, senior citizen, right? Yeah. Then, so they, they of course, we will coach the, the, the senior citizen on how to, uh, how to talk like this. But so they may, probably it's, it's like you have to draw some guideline or uh, maybe, absolutely. yeah. Yeah, so no, as, long right. as, as long as it's not like one parent or, or one adult taking up the whole show, then probably it will, will not be a good idea. La. I think what we'll have to do is go with kind of a, a you know a fair play honor approach where we'll give some guidelines, but I think people have to interpret it themselves to an extent as to what seems like you know fair. Um, and yeah, if there are any objections to our judgments for inclusion in the festival, then you know we'll, we'll be able to do it on a case by case basis. But I think yeah. yeah, thank you so much for highlighting that. I think that's really yeah. then then the, on the format, I would I would suggest that um, it has to be uh, maybe it advisable to be compatible to handphone, mobile phone, in a portrait format. Um, yeah, yeah I, the, the thing with the, with portrait format, I, I mean, I, it, coming from me is an immediate response. It's just, <laughs> I, I, you know, we all like to see 16 by 9 and cinematographic <laughs> aspect ratio. So I think it would be a bit of an aesthetic yeah. you know, insult so, to other filmmakers. But. Yeah, so, it's, so maybe because to, to, to us, maybe that for the youth, they probably they will watch the video more often through their handphone. So probably oh. you, you can have two... Two format, 
let the participant choose which format they want. Yeah. Right. So at least you you because at least you can allow a, a portrait that you can fit in the handphone nicely. It's yeah. it's just a matter of doing the rendering uh, rendering format lah. So of course, if uh, if the rule say you have to rendering by to a um, computer format, no problem. Ah, I the, think that you know, the video can be taken taken any shot, but the it, the format is only come in when we want to do the rendering. Yeah, I, I, there's very good points, particularly about the latency yeah. consumption. Um, I, I guess one thing is those who are who are aspirational will be hoping that they'll be seeing it on a big screen at MBO, so they'll <laughs> they'll they'll want to have it formatted for optimization there. Um, yeah. But I definitely, in terms of most people seeing it on on mobile phone, I mean, don't let David Lynch hear you say that. He'll he'll start fuming and lose his cool. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I think uh, it, it's a good point. So yeah. we're actually trying to be as on. Restra restraining as, as few constraints as possible in this so people can use yeah. film however they want and people might use it yeah. in ways that are pretty inventive and experimental and we're open yeah. to that um but we'll definitely we'll probably have to give some guidelines for sure <laughs> right. nah. right. okay right. thank you Ken. Okay, thank you. great thoughts so edward can i hand over to you to talk a little bit about the experience of making a film give some advice yeah uh sorry to follow up the previous question i'm thinking uh because like um, in terms of ratio, aspect ratio these days, uh, many of our client jobs and things, uh, media, uh, more and more they are starting to accept 9 by 16, which is the vertical vertical format. Mm. And it feels like, yes, like uh, uh, an old school filmmaker like us um, so would see it as an insult and maybe MBO technically wouldn't, wouldn't be able to accept it. But I do have to agree. I think I talked to Bashir re regarding, regarding this as well. Uh, a new generation is coming. Uh, our art form is becoming uh, outdated. And I feel like the new form of filmmaking is going to be different in the coming years where these youth are coming up. And because like how they see things, the things they see, they have like, I wouldn't say lack of patience, but the things they, 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 they I feel like they, they absorb uh, information that are different from us. They see things more direct, more quicker, six seconds, 10 seconds. We're talking about TikTok. And those are the informations that they, they are getting these days. And back in our days, we want things, we want media of two hours, sometimes even three hours, you know, like a nine by 16, old school, sitting down, we enjoy it. We enjoy every bit of it. But yeah, uh, I mean, it's it's a it's I feel like it's a it's something that we we might need to think about it as well. Like in the end, I feel like now now what we are doing it's it's that we we have a team, we have a guideline going on, which is mental health. And in terms of what 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 format, but at this point, I think because we are going for film festival, film film competition, we might have to follow the guideline that Mark just mentioned. And uh, once we we get that done, as long as the message is out there. And that is the most important thing, which comes to my point. Uh, don't think too much and just point and shoot because in the end, uh, things are getting so easy right now with our phone on our hand, uh, with those resolutions, uh, the best ever, uh, even comparable to many cameras out there. Uh, there is no reason to think about the technical or, or many other uh, reason about it. Just, you know, just, just, just you have a story, you have an inspiration, you can just whip up your phone and just shoot whoever who is around us. And, and that's one thing about being resourceful. Sometimes uh, as a producer, sometimes people keep coming to me and, and ask about like, hey, you must be really resourceful. Only then you can make films, like your parents must be rich, no people and things like that. Well, that's not true because being resourceful is about like seeing around what you have. You have your mom, you have your dad, you have your brother around in the, in the living room, you know, you just use your phone and you just shoot a story that you have in mind and that is being resourceful. That, that's what I think, you know, that's very important. And uh, being this, this festival being for youth, and I feel like that is, very, uh, that is something that really have to take in mind. Sometimes like, uh, like technical requirements, I think we, we really don't see that as much of a priority. And that's something we, we put all the way in the back. And uh, yeah, uh, for example, uh, I joined a competition called a BMW Shorties uh, past few years for six times. Since I was in college, I've been starting. And for the five times, I was only thinking about, like, I want to win. And whenever I think about I want to win, I don't win. And the one time, the, the sixth time, I'm thinking about, like, 
okay, this is a story that I really, really, really like. You know, I work with some friends, two or three of our friends, and we started writing. This, this is something that we really like, and we really want to shoot it, and we, we, we just want to tell the story, and that's it. We want to share it, and that's it. And that's when we think about, like, you know what? Might as well just submit it. I, I didn't agree at the time. We had a little debate, but then my director think about submitting, and then we submitted it, and then we won. That, that's because... That is a story that we truly, truly, sincerely love it. And th that comes back to this mental health issue. If It is nice that it's really set a guideline for us, mental health. And this is something that we all here are care, are care about these issues right now. And if we really care, and it's easy because that is the driving force. That is the motivation that we have, which is mental health. We want to tell, we want to raise awareness. We want to let more people know about this issue. It could be from our, ourselves. It could be from people around us. And once that is an inspiration, uh, it, it, it just let it be the driving force. It's not hard to do it. If it's not something you're inspired, it's very hard. You have to push yourself to do it. You know, that's the difference. So I think if you ask, I mean, like uh, being a guest speaker right here, I don't have much to say, but that's all. I mean, like just let inspiration drive you, uh, motivate yourself, just tell the story you want to tell and that's it. And yeah. Fantastic, Edward. Thanks so much for sharing that and very inspiring in that you, you merge the, the combined passions of mental health and film brilliantly there. Let me take the chance now before I forget. Um, could we open our mics and give a round of applause to our speakers and our coordinators today for all their help? Could you join me in a round of applause to Edward? And oh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> I came in late, I feel. <laughs> yeah, this is a round of applause for tardiness. You're being rewarded uh, for being late. It's my fault. <laughs> all right thank you. yeah i it's um just to highlight that the challenges run the constraints around the now of course it's harder to make a film than ever and whenever if you're making a film now if your film isn't made then of course please make sure you observe physical distancing and everything else but as well you can just see ways to innovate around the technology and around the constraints and these challenges can become opportunities and as i would say look around you and there are things maybe that you can you know pay more attention to and you can capture but really looking forward to seeing what people submit um, all right, let's move on to the key points then. What time is it? We're a little bit over time, so we'll, we'll come to a close shortly. So as I said, the first things to remember are safety, um, your physical safety, if you're on COVID-19, but your psychological safety too. People are going to be thinking about things potentially that they don't spend a lot of time thinking about, and that can be hard sometimes emotionally. So we'll be providing some guidelines and suggestions that people can do, particularly for the younger people in schools that we'll be disseminating through teachers and counselors. Um, and if you do uh, feel like you wanna to talk to somebody, you can reach out to the numbers that um, we provided earlier. Uh, the key dates to remember, the submissions are open from the 20th of October to the 20th of December. So you've got two months window there. As I said, the Film Freeway website will be open from then. We've got two webinars to support this uh, festival and they tie in uh, quite nicely to some of the things we've been talking about so the first one is on positive psychology and mental health and that's going to be an evening session i think it's eight o'clock or eight thirty on october the 27th so not too far away and that'll be hosted by one of our experts in positive psychology dr eugene t and he's going to be joined by maslan othman who was the um the first astrophysicist in malaysia and also um, a pioneer in space exploration and the Malaysian space program. So an, an amazingly interesting and resilient lady who's going to be sharing her experiences. Um, and also Jeremy Tan, who is a mental health advocate who spoke at our first session last week. He's very much into positive mental health and um, positive well-being. So please join us for that. We've then got a session on mental health uh, and access to services. So we spoke there a little bit about um, the online delivery of services now, now that can be more challenging and how people can be reluctant also to access services at any time. So we'll be having a session about um, how we can ease people's, uh, ourselves, our friends, our family members, if we think they need help, or if you think you might uh, benefit from a bit of support, what you can do, how you can go about doing that, and what we know about overcoming any barriers. Then the final event will be in January. We've not fixed the date yet, but we imagine it will be the very end of January. And that's when we hope to have a screening with an award ceremony in MBO Cinemas Tropicana. If it's not possible, we'll be having a virtual event and we'll wait till further down the line before we can um, all meet face to face. I just want to briefly recognize our amazing team. Um, I'll just see if we have any, any questions just yet. Uh, okay, so yeah, Yvonne, thank you. Yvonne's just given our contact details in the chat there. 
but I just want to mention our team. So we have a, a, a more or less a dozen undergraduate uh, coordinators on this program, putting the festival together, doing all the work, bringing all the inspiration, and we really appreciate all of their work. Hopefully you'll get to know them over the couple of months. Um, a few of our faculty at MMHA and at Health University, and we've also got sponsorship from um, Grim Film and MBO Cinemas and support from the Rotary Club Bucket Chiara. Anthony was just speaking to us there, as well as the Rotary Actors and the Center for Psychological Counseling Services who are offering the packages of therapy and counseling to those prize winners if they want to take it. And also Heads Up, which is um, Jeremy Tan's led um, mental health initiative. So thanks to everybody who's taking part in this and thanks everybody for coming this morning and joining us and sharing your, your ideas. Before we end, we do perhaps have a little bit of time if anybody has any questions, just to give you an opportunity to, to raise them now before we close. Yeah, Mark, I think uh, you made a point just now when Kenneth Tan raised the question. I think mm. the whole point of the competition is to have the youth perspective of mental health. Uh, and how do they see mental health? And, you know, even if they were to go to a old folks home and, you know, take a video of all the old folks home there, that's their perspective of mental yeah. health. You said, you know, yeah. they want to give a picture of how they see dementia because dementia is impacting the caregivers and the family around them. Isn't it? Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for raising that, Anthony. I think that's critical. And, you know, I, I think I've, I've demonstrated today just through my take on things that the, the detachment from the youth perspective, and as Edward says, the way, the way young people function, the way they experience life, their, their lives, it, it's, it's changing so radically quickly. So again, just to underline that point, we, we're trying to be as low constraint on, on how you do this, how you film it, your ideas. Um, so we really want to you know, a, allow you to, to, um, yeah, to express your, your take on mental health, however that might be. Yeah. Okay. I think Good. we've come to the end. So thanks everybody again. If you've got any questions, you can email us on mymindonfilm.my at gmail.com or you can follow us as well on Instagram and Facebook where you'll get updates. Um, and we look forward to seeing all the submissions and catching up with you over the next couple of months. All right, guys. Thanks everybody. Have a Thank lovely you. Saturday. Take care. Bye bye. You too. Have a great weekend. Will do. See you. Bye bye.